Welcome back to the channel, Casper fans. Today we're diving into something exciting that's on the horizon for Casper KRC 721, the upcoming standard for NFTs on the Casper network. If you've seen the power of KRC 20 for creating fungible tokens, then you'll be just as excited for the next step, unique non-fungible assets on Casper. In this video, we'll explore what KRC 721 could look like, why we're comparing it to ordinals on Bitcoin, and what we expect from this game-changing technology for the Caspa ecosystem. Let's get started. <coughs> Casplex recently shared their next uh, phase roadmap on X, focusing on enhancing functionalities for decentralized trading. Towards the end of this phase, they plan to introduce an NFT collection feature, enabling the creation and management of unique digital assets. In their documentation, Casplex still highlights KRC 721 as one of their upcoming features, alongside KRC 20 tokens. So let's talk about KRC 721. While there's no detailed documentation yet, based on what we know from KRC 20, KRC 721 will bring non-fungible tokens, NFTs, to the Caspa network. Just like how KRC 20 lets you mint tokens that are all the same, fungible. I think KRC 721 will allow the creation of unique digital assets, whether it's digital art, collectibles, or in-game items. One thing to note, Caspa doesn't support smart contracts like Ethereum does. So instead of looking to Ethereum's ERC 721, the comparison we'll be making is with ordinals on Bitcoin. This helps us better understand how NFTs will work on Caspa, given the network structure. So why are we comparing KRC 721 to ordinals on Bitcoin? Well, it's simple. Both Casper and Bitcoin don't use smart contracts to create NFTs. Ordinals on, on Bitcoin lets you attach data, like uh, images or text, to individual Satoshis, turning them into NFTs. In a similar way, KRC 721 will allow data to be inscribed into a Casper transactions, but it's still unclear whether this will apply to a SOMPI, the smallest unit in Casper. Caspa aims to handle NFTs with KRC 721 using the same method used in KRC 20 and ordinals, a method called the commit reveal scheme. This breaks the NFT creation process into two steps. Here's how it works. Commit transaction. First, you prepare the NFT data, like an image or, uh, or description, in a commit step. Think of it like sealing the NFT data inside an envelope, but not revealing what's inside just yet. Reveal transaction. When you're ready to show the NFT, you use a second transaction to reveal the contents of the envelope. This is when the NFT is visible to everyone on the network. This system keeps the chain from being overloaded with too much data at once, which can happen if everything is written in a single transaction. However, if the data is large, like a high-resolution image, it could still put some strain on the network when revealed. Casplex mentions that data shouldn't exceed 520 bytes per push meaning it might be broken into smaller pieces to keep things organized. It's still unclear whether we'll need to split data into chunks and push them one at a time, if the 520 byte limitation will be changed, or if Casplex uh, will enforce the use of remote storage, like IPFS, where only a hash and link are stored on chain to verify the authenticity of the NFT. Ordinals took advantage of the Taproot upgrade in Bitcoin to enable inscriptions. However, I personally doubt that the Caspa Core team uh, will introduce a new proposal for a Caspa upgrade. The Caspa Core team has tried to stay aligned with their roadmap and avoid making significant changes related to Casplex developments. We'll have to wait and see what actually happens. Now, I will share my thoughts on how this technology might work based uh, on the data I've just shared. Given how KRC20 was designed, I believe Casplex would need to increase the data insertion limit to accommodate more complex data and metadata, such as images or videos, with attributes that enhance rarity, utility, or simply describe the properties of the asset. This data will likely be inscribed in MIME format, making it easier to manage in multiple parts. The Casplex indexer will play a key role in validating this data, checking the format, fees, and ownership, similar to its role with KRC20, and making it accessible via APIs for verification and tracking of attributes. NFTs will likely be identified by their reveal transaction ID from creation and transferred using the same 
commit and reveal process. For large files, Casplex might offer an IPFS service or, or allow creators to use IPFS, where only the link, hash, and attributes of the file are inserted on chain for authenticity. I think the inscription number could be managed directly by the indexer, which would track new NFTs. It might not be stored on chain unless Casplex uh, implements an additional process referring to the reveal transaction with its own post-processing data insertion mechanism. This would require extra fees, computing power, and time, and could pose challenges in managing and securing the decentralized deployment of indexers, especially when released as open source. Depending on the features and formats allowed and validated by Casplex indexers, other functionalities may emerge. However, without a Caspa network upgrade agreed upon by the core team, advanced features may come at a, a, at a significant cost in terms of computing resources and security challenges, making them difficult to implement without the use of concepts like uh, taproot in Bitcoin. Ordinal advanced features that might be missed in KRC 721. Deployment. Delegation. The delegate feature in Ordinals allows one inscription to reference and display the content of another, reducing storage costs and network bloat by avoiding data duplication. Instead of duplicating data, the delegate field uh, points to an existing inscription or one to be inscribed later. A reduced implementation could use reveal transactions instead of inscription numbers, but this would require a different uh, data format during deployment and present challenges for NFT marketplaces. Additionally, anyone could delegate via reveal transactions, which could lead to scams uh, without a whitelist system, which would also be difficult to maintain. Pointers. The pointer feature in Ordinals lets you inscribe data on a specific Satoshi, allowing multiple inscriptions in a single transaction. This feature would be nearly impossible to implement on Caspa without a network upgrade. Provenance. Provenance in Ordinals enables trustless on-chain lineage by establishing parent-child relationships between inscriptions. This is useful for creating collections with linked child inscriptions. A reduced implementation on CASPA would be possible, but concerns similar to those for delegation, such as security and verification, would arise. Recursion. Recursion allows uh, inscriptions to access and reuse the content of other inscriptions, enabling shared resources and generative art. While challenging, it could be implemented in a reduced form, facing similar concerns as delegation. Rendering. Rendering ensures inscriptions are displayed correctly across different platforms. It would be possible on CASPA, but it would require additional data insertion and standardization, making it more complex. Casplex would need to define a consistent format across all data types and platforms to ensure proper use by NFT marketplaces. Satoshi Rarity. Satoshi Rarity in Ordinals reflects the uniqueness of individual Satoshis based on their mining history. For example, rare Satoshis could come from the first block of a halving period. This feature would be impossible to implement on Caspa without a network upgrade. In conclusion, while ordinals minimize UTXO bloat through Taproot's efficient data storage, they still contribute to blockchain growth. The debate around ordinals and runes shows a clear divide. Some believe these innovations detract from Bitcoin's original vision of peer-to-peer -peer cash, causing higher fees and slower speeds. On the other hand, others are, uh, are optimistic, focusing on Bitcoin's potential to outshine competitors like Ethereum and Solana. These features could lead to significant returns, though speculative projects, especially in the meme sector, might not have long-term staying power. I see similar patterns emerging in CASPA with KRC20 and KRC721, where early hype increases uh, is, uh, popularity and rewards for miners. However, meme tokens are also starting to flood the market, with some in the community concerned that these projects stray from CASPA's um, core purpose. I believe KRC20 and KRC721 are just the beginning paving the way for more practical applications. As CASPA's technology grows, I'm hopeful industries like finance, healthcare, and utilities will embrace CASPA's decentralized, tamper-proof solutions. 
Imagine a world where banks and other sectors rely on CASPA to store and verify data securely, free from manipulation, a future I'm excited to see unfold. I hope you found this content valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials and insights like this. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the latest developments in this technology and beyond. Let's keep exploring and learning together. Until the next time, cheers.